Aww. Sneak. Thank you for the sub, buddy. No, it's not that the sub message is broken. Uh, the issue is that um, because I'm on this PC with the 2060 and everything, I turned off a lot of that, or lo lo a lot of, I turned off a lot of those extra effects, a lot of those things that um, otherwise might actually slow the PC down and cause it to stutter a, a, a bit too much during the stream. So thank you very much for subscribing and also letting me know that you subscribed. I don't have any indication. When we go back to the normal stream setup, which will hopefully be tomorrow, um, don't worry, your message will, will be read loud and clear by the bot as well as um, uh, explode on screen. So thank you for that. All right, I do apologize. And I also want to apologize to the stream again because that was a bit of a cock up. YouTube streaming with a restream is a bit of an issue, but we should be all up and going now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully um, this one doesn't mess up because we're at the MISC Expo, checking out the MISC ships. Uh, I did briefly mention, so I'll say it again. I actually am quite a big fan of, what are you waving at me for? I'm actually a big fan of MISC ships because they use alien technology. The Freelancer series, um, uh, uh, even the Razor series, actually, they use um, Xeon engines, which are obviously meant to be the best in their class for engine design and performance. Uh, Xeon is an alien manufacturer. It's the same thing as uh, the engines you see on the uh, Cartuel, the sort of Xeon balls that move around. Very fancy, very cool. I'm a big fan. Um, the Starfarer, this is, well, this is the Gemini version. So apart from it just having alien engines, thanks to uh, Xeon Tech, it's also upgraded uh, with a bit of steroids, thanks to Aegis Dynamics. Um, if you've never seen this ship before, then you're probably quite new to the game. It's actually one of the largest, what well, it was, one of the largest ships ever um, in the game for a long, long, long time. Um, in fact, it's been used by the IMI for a few operations, especially in the most recent victory that we had. Um, uh, against uh, UE Pathfinders. Fantastic operation. Um, I won't lie though, the ship itself is quite limiting. It's quite old. As you'll see, it suffers from, um, well, wasted space sim syndrome and a confusing as fudge uh, stairway system. Uh, the Banu also used Xeon engines. I didn't know that. I thought the Banu used Banu engines. But then again, I did also watch a video about the Merchantman. Uh, a, a favorite ship of mine that does use uh, Xeon technology because that's what the Banu do. They borrow stuff. Yes, and as Sneak rightly said in chat, this is the first large ship to come into the game back in 2.8. 2. So, 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 a while ago. A long, long time ago. Am I right? It was almost a couple years ago now. <laughs> Also, I apologize if I cough. I'm still ill, technically. As you can hear. Let me... <laughs> okay. Fuck! I got attacked by the r ladder. Alright, now we're over. Hello, Brian. And hello to you guys watching this on YouTube later on. Uh, what now? Well, we've seen the this ship, and we've seen the Razor. There's not much to talk about, apart from the fact that this ship is old, and it has massive guns, size 5s. Um, I mean, look at that ginormous there's not much to say about it it doesn't do anything the 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 aspects of this ship aren't in game and they won't be in game for ages in fact the most useful ship that misc make is probably the prospector i mean you, you can go for a freelancer for sure because the freelancers are obviously a fantastic transport vehicle for cargo but the best ship just by itself is definitely the prospector that misc do it's the only ship that on its own without buying anything or investing any more time or money can go out and, and generate wealth because you just have to mine and the mining rocks are there for you already. You haven't got to have money. You just start making it. It's probably one of the best ships to uh, to get if you're new to the game. Maybe not with real money. It's a bit expensive. But with in-game money, for sure, you can rent it for 46,000 alpha UEC from Hurston, I believe. So it's quite affordable. Oh, look at the whole series. This is the... C? No, that's not the C. That's got to be hull B, right? Or whatever it is. What is it? Which, which, which one is it? Hull A? Oh, it's not even the, the bigger small one. Yeah, and mining is one of the biggest flushed out game loops right now in game, yeah, because it's one of the e e easiest to control. I'm doing okay, Prime. Thank you for asking. i got a lot of friends that like this ship. Um, 
not this one particularly. The whole C, I think, is the most commonly purchased one. I, I used to have a whole C, melted it. Because it, it, it does seem really, really cool to have this massive cargo ship that isn't, pardon me, it's not too big that it's unrealistic, but it's big enough that it outperforms every freighter uh, of, of the price range. I think it's a little bit cheaper than a, a Caterpillar, actually. Let's have a look. I'm thinking over here we're going to have the whole B or the whole E. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's the whole C. Yeah, that's the one I had. That's the one I, I used to have. Um, I think it's the one that's closest to actually coming out. But look at it. Look at that cargo that it holds. It's ridiculous. And the engines as well. The engines are very cool. Very Star Wars uh, Republic. Very Star Wars Re 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 like Rebels design. Big fan of the engines. Um, very cool. Very nice. Um, it's just the... It's the main front I'm, not, I'm a bit worried about. The ship itself is not very defendable. It does have um, guns, but they're turrets. I don't believe it has any pilot-facing guns. One of the turrets, I believe, is here in the nose. Uh, there's another one on top. For some reason, they've not got it on this model, but it's in the it's in the concept art. So, be surprised if it vanishes. Especially, it'd be a bit weird to have a freighter with no guns at all. You know, supposed to defend yourself against pirates. My little buccaneer would better destroy it. Oh my god, my nose is so itchy. Fuck. There. I'm gonna rip it off. I'm gonna rip off my nose in a minute, guys. Jesus, wet. And there's nothing here. There's no ground vehicles for Misk, and because Misk is the only man manufactured today, there's nothing there. Let's have a little look then. I'm gonna go to my favourite series of ships, the Reliant. Co oh my, fuck me sideways. Ah, oh, what the hell is crawled into my nose? It's the itch monster. Fucking hell. Ah. Hmm. Ah. Let's go hall two and three. I think that's... I think that's Reliant. I think that's the Reliant series. We'll find out. If it's not, if it's a freelancer series, Truth Nick will be very happy. Except when I'm flying them. He doesn't like it when I, when I fly as freelancer. For some reason. God knows what. A bit weird, I think. I think it's a bit weird with this freelancer. God, you slow down, don't you? Fucking hell. Move! Sprint! Thank you. Ah, uh, it is the Reliance series I've chosen. Nice! Um, I knew it. I knew I would be pulled straight to it. Because I have big brain, and my big brain likes the Reliance series, because it's cool. So the cool thing about the Reliance series is, you know how it looks horizontal now? When you actually go to fly it, the wings rotate up. A bit like, um... A bit like... Uh, Boba Fett's, um, like, gunfighter in Star Wars. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. This is the reporting version or the camera crew version. I, I'll be honest, never actually, I, I don't think this will ever come in, into play in, in, the, in the verse whatsoever. There's absolutely no way for them to, to get this actually in game. There's just, it's just not possible. It's not real. It's a joke. It's a fantasy. This is the core, I believe? No? Which one's this one? Some sort of scientific research variant? What the hell? What's this? That's cool. What is this? Which one are you? You look fancy. I'm gonna have a look inside you. Oh, what does it say? Misc Reliant Sen. Look at that. Nice. Oh, it has the bed from the Tanner series. This must be the research one. Yeah, because you've got a little chair there. Experimentation table. You've got some towels in case you get a bit messy. An access point for your hands as well. Oh, it's got a toilet and everything. Look at that. Oh, Ooh, nice shot. Thank you. Not been inside this ship before. And you can see so much. I mean, look at that. When you're sat in, in here. Okay. There's a lot to see. It's just glass everywhere. Lovely. It's lovely. But this isn't the one I recommend. The one I recommend is the one in the middle. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Tanner. You buy this Tanner, right? 
in game or with real, real cash. Uh, it's about like seventy dollars. Um, has a bed still, so you can log out. Has cargo space. Has a shower and a toilet. Has a gun rack and clothes rack. The only thing is missing is uh, an area to make food and water. But you still have access to your panels. The exact same seats. The cool thing about this ship, though, is it's, it's really overpowered for what it is. 16 size 2 missiles. It packs the exact same DPS potential as a Super Hornet. A Super Hornet? Um, with two size 2 hard points. Uh, and then another size 3 on the wings. But those size 3s, although they're very, very cool, and they are gimbaled, I think, swap them out. And you swap them out for the Reliant Gilroy gim gimbals here from the core, which allows you to have two size 2s, which is just a much better, much better thing to do. And this is the cargo variant, which I find... I find it interesting that they gave the cargo variant more guns than the, the military sort of combat variant, but they did. And that's just the way it is. But it's got quite a nice cargo space. I'm hoping that this is the sort of ship that a lot of um, Daymar Rally racers or whatever might might put their bikes inside of. Because I feel like it has that sleek, that sleek, very cool, small utilitarian vehicle aspect to it. Almost like a, a small minivan, like an Avenger, but a better looking Avenger. Put your little tumbrel bike in there, your TR. Roll out the back of it, go on a mission, come back. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, now to check out the freelancers. I want to go and see the DUR again. Freelancer DUR was um, back when this game was just quite literally um, Pokemon capture all the JPEGs. Um, a freelancer dir was what I used used to have as one of my favorite JPEGs and also my most expensive J J JPEG. Um, God, if younger self could see me now, I'd probably call me an idiot or a moron. Imagine that. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the time when you were happy, the fact that you had a freelancer dir and that was all you had, and you were like, "Oh wow, look at this ship that I have. I'm, I'm so lucky to have it, and can't wait to play. And it's so expensive. Couldn't imagine spending any more than that." And then a few years later, you'd spend 10 times more than that. It's not good. But don't spend money, kids. Buy a starter pack. Earn money in-game. Join an org. Have fun. It's all you have to do. Don't, don't get sucked in by all the fancy ships you're seeing here today on the I IAE, okay? It's a lovely place to be, and it's a cool event, but don't get sucked in. Don't go spending money you don't have on ships you don't need in a game that may or may not still come out. Don't forget, it's in alpha. My frame rate should tell you that. It's in alpha. Oh, there it is. Look at it. There's a Freelancer Max. Very pretty. Big fan. Big orange colors. There's the normal Freelancer. Blah. No one likes that. Look at this, though. Freelancer. Duh. So they all share the same chassis. They're all very, very similar in stats and hull strength. Only real di di differences are, of course, the Max. Thank you, phone. The Max has a massive cargo pay payload amount, um, almost as, uh, uh, not as big as the Caterpillar, but um, very, very reliable because it's fast and much smaller than a Caterpillar, which means you can get in and out of small spaces much faster, which actually means that some people I've spoken to who do trade often prefer to use this over a Caterpillar because of the speed advantage, especially on small flights. Um, the Freelancer Dure has extra fuel tanks, so it benefits from being able to travel for a lot further. And I wonder what the interior is actually like. I've not seen the interior of the Dura since, uh, well, since it what, what, what was a JPEG in my JPEG hangar. Let's have a little look. Let's have a little gander. I wonder if it is actually different. Interesting. What's that? Looks to me like, um, God knows what. Equipment, perhaps? More cargo space. And then the exact same interior as almost any other uh, freelancer. The bathroom's over here on the left. I've hidden inside of these quite a lot to trap people when they come in. It's quite fun. They've got your beds, and then you've got your cockpit. God, that's bright. That is a bright cockpit. Holy crap. And then you've got your exit doorway. There we go. I believe one of the most popular freelancers, apart from the Max, which is 
again, a behemoth in size to weight ratio, it's ginormous, um, is this. The Freelancer Miss, an old favorite of mine, because I like the color green. It's the military version of Freelancer's chassis, like, ship series. Um, it's, 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 I would say it's not really a fighter. Imagine it to be like um, Star Citizen's own destroyer or like small torpedo boat. It really is just a, it's not even a gunboat. It's a missile boat. It's just designed to launch missiles. It has four size threes on gimbals, which are quite substantial. But really, apart from quite a substantially nice cargo space, it's got these missile racks. They are bespoke. And I believe it holds 32 size 3 missiles. 32 size 3s. Which, um, to put that into perspective, is enough to destroy two caterpillars from full salvo. You just launch 16 at one, 16 at another. They're both dead. Size 3 torpedoes do about 8,000 damage each. So you're looking at uh, quite a healthy chunk of change, really. A hundred and two, almost 200,000 damage, which is more than the hull strength of a Caterpillar. So it really is a very viable ship. If you're thinking about upgrading to something that can do a bit of transporting, but also packs one of the biggest punches in game. There you go. Misc Freelancer Miss. The Miss stands for missiles, obviously. It'd be a bit weird if it stands for something else. Otherwise, I don't recommend anything more than the Freelancer Max or the Miss from Misc personally. Um, especially if you want to upgrade to something. All those other ships I showed you earlier, fantastic starter ships. The Reliance series are some of the best. Um, definitely don't even touch a Starfarer Gem Gemini. It means nothing to no one. Um, and the Dur and the basic Freelancer, not really worth it. They're just good vessels. I'd rather use a Cutlass Black than a Freelancer standard because a Cutlass Black, although it can hold less, uh, is a lot more agile and a lot faster as well as being able to pack a punch and provide you and a friend better shooting opportunities to have fun in the verse. The Freelancer Max is obviously designed to be Max. It's supposed to carry the most for its class, and it does do that really, really well, as well as some good speeds, and it looks nice. And if you want to go and destroy a lot of people, do some bounties, or be an asshole pirate, the miss is there for you as well. Um, unfortunately, apart from that, uh, misc don't make much else. A bit like Drake, which we will be checking out later today, um, is a very bespoke air-only manufacturer with nothing to show for its ground capabilities. Um, and frankly, all they really have are smaller ships. Um, nothing ginormous. I mean, you have the Gemini and the Caterpillar, obviously, for Drake. Nothing bigger than that yet. We are hoping to see it soon. So, yeah, that's it. That is the Misk. That's Misk's adventure. I'm... So sorry it was short-lived and very, very exciting. Um, but that's just the way it is. There's not much to show sometimes at these expos. Just like yesterday's Crusader event, if you're watching that on YouTube, you can go check it out after this video. There really isn't much to see some sometimes. The expo is just that. It's an exposition of the ships we currently can fly. So apart from the holograms and the fake, fakery that is the trailers for, this, for the Crusader day, which involved a C2 that wasn't actually here. Still mad about that. Um, there's not much to see. Actually. 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 Oh, no, I was going to say where the mole is, but the mole is made by Argo, which is a different manufacturer. I want to show you guys quickly before I, I end this uh, YouTube segment of the stream. The inside of the Prospector, because this is, again, like I said, one of the ships that I'm going to, I recommend to almost all... Uh, Let's get in the chat. Almost all players, if they intend to be self-sufficient. If you haven't got the time to do a lot of freighting and you just want to and you want to play the game in the best loop possible right now, the prospector is the best way to do it. Is it gonna actually let me power on? That would be a no. The Prospector is the best ship you can get right now for self-sufficient game, game gameplay. It has the best loops of any any uh, gameplay right now. Mining does. It's a really nice looking ship. I don't think that it's going to provide you anything more than the ability to mine. It cannot tackle fighters. It can't destroy anyone in a 1v1 fight. What it does let you do though is have a bed log out. Easy access to repair your broken and damaged systems. It provides you with a shower. 
uh, toilet, which is fantastic. Uh, it also, I believe, provides you with uh, food, no? Yeah, it does. Water and food. So in the future, when they introduce water and things like that as being a, a necessity that you need, and you can get it out of your ship, it will be here. So it really is a fantastic ship to have for yourself if you are the sort of player that, you know, isn't interested in getting involved with an org right now because maybe you haven't got the time. Uh, you're not interested in combat because that's also, again, a very fleshed out, if you can call shooting someone fleshed out, part of the game. Mining is the best avenue right now for enjoyment and game gameplay. And uh, I, I think it's one of the best ways to, uh, to have fun right now in the game. Um, it's difficult to say other, other than that what I think you should get. I think that... If I'm not mistaken, I think the guys in chat would agree with me that uh, there's no reason to go for a Gemini. Not worth it. Complete waste of time, money, effort. Uh, the Razor series, again, it looks nice. And if you want to play the game just because you want to look nice and have fun like that, the Razor's good, but otherwise it's understated. Uh, it's a terrible racer. It drifts way too much. Um, the only good ship that MISC have to offer right now is the Freelancer Max, Freelancer Miss, and the Prospector. Obviously, the Reliance series are great, but the Reliance series get out, <laughs> outstated quite quickly. Um, as soon as you move on, <coughs> pardon me, the things like <coughs> once you move on to things like the Nomad, the brand new ship from Crusader that came out at the beginning of the expo, those sort of ships that have uh, it's a habit of Sig to introduce new things that make old ones obsolete annoyingly, um, just the way it is. All right, hopefully you enjoyed watching this. So thank you guys on YouTube very much. I will catch you over on Twitch. If you wanted to uh, obviously um, keep up to date with it, with me live, then come follow, subscribe like TrueSync did. Really smart idea. Uh, don't worry, though, those of you on Twitch that are w w watching, we will be continuing on with some actual fun, like shooting people and blowing things up, making some money. I believe if I kill myself, I should end up going back to Hurston, which will be great. <laughs> <coughs> if uh, my throat can handle it, we'll have to see. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, and yeah. All right. Let's go.